Welcome to ECA Elimu Learning Simplified and welcome to this lesson. In the previous lesson, we discussed good conductors of heat and poor conductor of heat. Then we discussed lagging as a process of preventing heat loss from a poor conductors of heat. Now in this lesson, we are going to discuss the applications of good and poor conductors of heat. My name is Albert. I hope you will enjoy the lesson. By the end of this lesson, I expect you to be able to explain the applications of good and poor conductors of heat in our daily lives. So one of the applications of good and poor conductors of heat is in the manufacture of cooking utensils. So what we are going to realize Cooking utensils are designed in such a way that the part which is in contact with the flame is a good conductor, good conductor of heat. And then the part where you handle is a poor conductor of heat. Now, the reason why this part which is uh, close to the flame or the one which will be in contact with the flame is a good conductor is its function is conduct it's made of good conductor so that it can conduct heat rapidly so that it can burn the substance which you are cooking then the reason why we use an insulator or a poor conductor where you handle is to prevent prevent hands from being burned to prevent your hand from being burned so in this case you have applied both good conductors and poor conductors in manufacture of cooking utensils. Another application of good conductors of heat is the overheating integrated circuit. Overheating integrated circuit or transistors. These two are devices are electronic devices which plays a very important role in electronic gadgets. Now when these two gadgets or devices that is integrated circuits and transistors are in use, most of the time they generate a lot of heat. And if that heat is concentrated within those or uh, these devices, all these uh, components, the functioning of those components will be reduced due to increased resistance, as we are going to say in form three. So for us to make sure that these components work normally, then we surround the integrated circuits and transistors with a good conduct of heat. Like in this case, we have a sample picture of a transistor and integrated circuit. Yeah, this is a good conductor, good conductor of heat. And then this is where we have the, the, the circuits. These are the integrated circuits, which are here, ICs. These are ICs. So these ICs are generating a lot of heat. When they generate a lot of heat, this heat should be conducted away from them. So this way it will be conducted with this good conductor which is surrounding them and when the heat reaches this good conductor then it will be conducted away from them and then the part which has uh, the ICs or the transistors will be cooled in the process and in that way we will use our electronic device without any defect. So in this case we are using a good conductor to move heat which is generated at one point and it's not wanted there. So in this case, we are going to move heat, which is unwanted from a device to the outer part of the component, and then we leave the device functioning normally. The second set of application of good and poor conductors of heat is that it's used in modern buildings, in modern buildings which have a double walls. So modern buildings have double walls. They have double walls. This is the first wall here. And then we have another wall here. And then in between these walls, we have an insulator or an insulating material. This is an insulator, insulator or a poor conductor. And then remember, this one is made of concrete. These walls are made of concrete. Concrete is a better conductor of heat than a poor conductor of heat, which we are going to introduce there. So the function of this double wall we are going to see, it contains some air. This air, remember gases are poor conductors of heat than solids. So this air is going to limit the amount of heat either conducted into the house 
into the house or out of the house. And then at the same time, this double wall has an insulator. When heat from inside wants to penetrate outside, if it's in cold places, it will remove this insulator. It will not be conducted outside. It will be maintained within the house. And if heat from outside, if heat from outside, if it's at hot places, if it wants to go inside, it will miss this insulator and then it will be maintained outside here. So in this case, we are using double walls with an insulator to prevent heat loss from inside the house to the outside the house in cold places and to prevent heat entering into the house in hot places. Then another, another application is firefighters. So firefighters, when they are fighting fire, they wear special clothes or special suits. These suits are made of asbestos. Asbestos is a special material which is an insulator or a poor conductor of heat. So when these firefighters are entering inside a house or a, a place which is on fire, they don't fear of excess heat in their body or being burned easily. So when they wear these clothes, Heat cannot be conducted from outside to inside, so they will not get any hotness inside their body. At the same time, these crows cannot catch fire easily. They can even move inside fire without catching fire because these materials are totally poor conductor of heat. Now, the third set of application of good and poor conductors of heat, in this case, we are going to consider one natural application that is in bed and then the other one in a wire goes the one that will perform in the lamp so bed when it is cold or when they have been laid on they always flap their wings if you have ever interacted with any beds you can witness this they always flap their wings the reason why they flap their wings is to attract air or to introduce air pocket they will attract some air into their feathers when they, they attract air into their feathers this help them to minimize heat loss from their body to the environment remember air is a poor conductor of heat air is a very poor conductor of heat because remember heat is only conducted by vibration of atoms or movement of electrons remember the atoms of air are very far away from each other from particular nature of matter so air will be a very poor conductor of heat now, when it's attracted into the feathers of birds, it's going to reduce the heat loss from the bird to the environment. So that one will maintain the heat within the bird. Wool, all fur, and even thatch. Those, those houses which are thatched using grass on the roofs, they make use of the same concept. When you have a thatched roof, it means the air which is attracted there will prevent heat coming from the sun into the house and it will also prevent heat loss from the house to the environment when it's very cold outside. So we also have an application of this one is that when we use soft board, soft boards on ceiling, when we put ceilings of soft boards is better than when we use a concrete soft board or a concrete ceiling. Concrete ceiling, remember concrete is a better conductor of heat. It conducts heat better than softy boards. So the reason why we use softy boards is that within the softy boards, there are some holes. Those holes will attract some air there. And when heat wants to move outside the house, those that air, since it's a poor conductor of heat, it will prevent heat from moving out. And if it is hot outside, the air which is in, in between the holes of the softy board will prevent heat from coming in because air is a poor conductor of heat. Now, the last application of good and poor conductors of heat, in this case, we applied in our science experiments, especially the chemistry experiments. When we are heating, we use a wire gauze. We use a wire gauze to place our beakers on top of them. Now, when you place a beaker where it's heating on top of a wire goes, we are making the heat which is concentrated at one point from a Bunsen burner to be conducted all through the round bottom of the flask or the flat bottom of the flask or the beaker which we are using. 
So the function of this of the wire was in this case is to spread heat uniformly within the surface which you are going to heat. Now that marks the end of our lesson today. In the next lesson, we are going to discuss why liquids are poor conductors of heat and why gases, as we have mentioned, will be the poorest conductor of heat.